chapter 6 is going to be my main text. I got some other references we'll go through, but uh, today is, we are celebrating Father's Day, and uh, one too long ago is Mother's Day, right? That's right. And uh, so today we're celebrating Mother, our Father's Day. And uh, I'd like to really concentrate on Ephesians chapter 4 is my text, or 6, Ephesians 6. Uh, but I'd like to concentrate on uh, relationships. And I think, well, of course, the highest relationship, I guess, would be with us to God. Amen. That'd be as high as you could go. Are you, do you have a relationship with God? Are you close to God? Well, do you talk to him very often? Does he talk to you very often? Mm -hmm. And that's how we kind of judge our relationships. And uh, do you hang around with his family? God's family. How many children does God have? <laughs> It'd be in the billions, I'm sure. Matter of fact, it's probably unnumberable. I believe that'd be the case. But uh, probably the next relationship would be husband and wife. Somebody says, why do you say that? Well, you know, one of these days the kids will grow up and move off. That's yeah, true. That's right. And then just mom and dad are going to be sitting there looking at each other. Yeah. But then you still want to keep the relationship with the kids, yeah. don't we? And we have that connection. And that's important, I believe. And uh, then you got other relationships, grandparents <laughs> to grandkids. Great Usually, if you get if you get around grandparents, it's, well, you want to see my picture of my grandkids, and they they got one handy that whoop it out on you, and uh, that's that's pretty common. And Manny's mom and dad came over to see Abigail graduate from kindergarten, because that's their oldest granddaughter, right? That's right. And uh, of course, they got two right behind that, Rebecca and Sarah. And uh, but the, these relationships are pretty important. Of course, you could go on down, brother and sister. That's a pretty high up relationship, isn't it? And uh, but then, you, what about your neighbors? You got a relationship with your neighbors? You ever talk to them? Maybe you could invite them to church. You never know. Of course, some of them they won't want to talk about church, but. Maybe you can work it in once in a while. I usually even try to preach to my doctors, <laughs> nurses. Since I go to so many doctors, that's a big part of my outreach <laughs> anymore. So I said, that's crazy. No, it's not either. But I'll tell you what I've found. A lot of doctors are saved. A lot of nurses are. And usually some of that might have to do with the kind of work they do because they care about people. And they've probably seen God work a few miracles. Sure, some doctors have seen God work some miracles. Of course, some of them don't give God the credit. Then business relationships. I think Manny and Edward do some of that. And I could throw in uh, walking on trail relationships. Every once in a while, Edward and I will be out and somebody will come up and say, Oh, yeah, I've been talking to you on the trail the last two or three years here. And we had that happen what, about a week ago out at the farmer's market. That lady says, but they, she talked like they hadn't really got to stop and talk too much because usually they're running in opposite directions or walking in op opposite directions. But anyway, I think we managed to give them a track and hopefully they'll read it. Amen. God's simple plan of salvation passed a bunch of those out. And uh, so, one of the most special relationships, I think, though, is children to fathers and parents. Don't you think that's a pretty high relationship? That's probably, from what I say, it's about third down, right? From us to God, husband, wife, and then parents to children. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not just preaching to fathers this morning. Mothers have a relationship with their children too, don't they? Mm -hmm. And you know, really sometimes uh, daughters and 
a lot of times the daughters are closer to the dad and the sons are closer to the mother. That's what I've seen most. But there's always exceptions to that. And uh, then a lot of times the kids kind of take after the parents, don't they? You think they imitate you? No doubt. Think you ought to give them a good thing to imitate? If they're going to follow in your footsteps, you think you ought to be careful what your footsteps are. Mm -hmm. Where they go and where they lead. And so, but why is Satan's always attacking the family? Yes, he does. I think they're really bad at attacking the family right now. Yeah. They don't even know what a family is. They don't know what a man or a woman is. Mm. It's crazy. When I was growing up, everybody pretty well knew who, what a woman was and what a man was and what a family was. Now, I don't know if you, eventually we might get to we'd be marrying animals. Oh, well, it's, it's possible. Who knows what they're going to get off into? Then people can't even decide whether they are a man or a woman. I think little girls ought to play with dolls and boys ought to play with toy soldiers. Somebody says, well, I don't know about that. Well, they, they, they had a big fight over a book here in the schools here recently. Not all boys are blue. You know what they decided? Keep it in the library. They have it in the Noblesville Library. Matter of fact, I'm going to get it and look at it. I'm sure I'll disagree with it, but I want to see what they're arguing about. I think it has to do with transgender and, yeah. Yeah. and all this stuff that goes on. But I, that way, if anybody ever asks, I say, well, I know what they're talking about. But usually if we're having a little boy, don't you have blue? Yeah. Yeah. Little blue booties? And if you have a little girl, you have little pink booties, right? Isn't that the way we do it? Yeah. No, I don't know. Maybe they have striped. I don't, I don't know what to do. They might have caught red, white, blue, red off. But anyway, I probably didn't have to say that, but I just like meddling, you know, and stirring up stuff. Of course, I don't stir up near as much as some of the liberals are demonstrations. Of course, the, you know, out the farmer's market, they got a lot of rules. You, they, they're not going to allow you to come out there and demonstrate. But I imagine if a bunch of liberals wanted to, they wouldn't care whether it was allowed or not. They'd just go do it. Yep. The conservatives at least have some respect for some of the laws. You know. And of course, most Christians are more conservative. Is that right or not? Thank God. We believe there's still a family. Yeah. We still believe there's men and there's women. And they're different. And men don't have babies, but women do. Right. If that wasn't the case, you wouldn't be here. Amen. Isn't that right? That's how it works. And we got a role to play and we need to play the role and somebody says how do we know what our role is whatever God made you and now what it is Amen. if you're a man be a man if you're a woman be a woman and that's what we ought to do but we're living in a day and an age when the way things were meant to be are changed and perverted am I wrong I didn't hear all of you yelling, Amen. I said no. Amen, Amen means do you agree with what I said? Amen. Amen. But I think there's a lot of perversion going on. The old fashioned ways are taboo. Well, and I, I understand some of this. I understand, especially with the prices now, that it'd be really difficult to live on one income. Right. And so a lot of families, mom and dad, both have to work. But then usually they have to pay somebody to take care of their children. And that eats up the salary. And that takes a lot of that. 
I remember back when my dad, he worked in construction. My mom worked at Western Electric in the factory. And sometimes he'd get laid off in the winter because of the weather. You know, in construction, when the weather's real bad, you can't work. And so sometimes he would get a part-time job. But then sometimes he'd just stay home and babysit me and my brother. Because they save money doing that too. And, you know, you have to kind of make a way, don't you? Is it, life always going to be easy. But I think we still ought to try to figure out how God would want things to be. Not how the world thinks it ought to be or how the devil thinks it ought to be or how society thinks it ought to be. Amen. You can't really make morals off of laws. That's right. Morals are funny. They try to make a, a law to... You know, I, one, that, one of them that bothers me a lot and maybe doesn't bother you, hate crimes. It doesn't matter if it's a hate crime or not. If they commit a crime, they committed a crime, put them in jail. And I'd even go farther. I think the Bible teaches capital punishment. That's right. The government has that right. But it, somebody says, I, and I know they mess up sometimes. I know that. But I think in America, we kind of bend over backwards trying not to. Don't we? And right now, I said, society is kind of perverted. Maybe they're using the legal system for politics. No doubt. And the courts. And now, since the Supreme Court's conservative, mostly, they keep attacking them. And they'd like to destroy that. Because the liberals really have pretty much the House and the Senate controlled. The only thing holding them back right now probably is the Supreme Court and the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. And they would love to get rid of the Constitution. But I don't know about you, the First Amendment to the Constitution is for me to have the right to be here in church this morning. That's right. And for me to preach what I'm preaching. Mm -hmm. And if they could, they'll take that away. Yes, then everybody gets all hot on the second one. I'm not as big on that as the first one. The second one's having guns and protecting your family. Mm -hmm. But I got a feeling God will protect your family more than you could with a gun. Amen. But if it come to it, Maybe you might get to the point where you don't have to have a gun. But if they pass laws where you can't, and of course those were put in there because before we separated from Britain, their soldiers would just come in your house and take over. And there wasn't any really a way of stopping them. But we did have the what they call the American Revolution. And then we had a fellow named George Washington. And we say he's the father of our nation, but they attack him anymore. They're tearing down all kinds of statues that represent our history. And they say we have a bad history. I haven't looked it up, but I've been thinking about studying a little bit. How many countries in the world had slavery? As a matter of fact, when Jesus was here on the earth, most of the people in the Roman Empire slaves. had slaves and were slaves. That's a fact. But yet America is the only terrible country. <clears throat> but even some of the minority people, at least we fought a civil war. Did we lose any men in the civil war? Lots. We lost more men in the civil war than any other war we ever fought. Because we were losing Americans on both sides. Weren't we? That's true. And all the, the ones on the southern side, I don't believe all of them loved slavery. They just felt like the North was attacking their homeland. Now, of course, now I, I didn't really mean to get into all this. Of course, we got a closed border down south, don't we? That's the claim. 
Well, one one week it was closed, and then the next week I'm going to close it. I'm going to close it. And then what our president said? He was preaching it was closed, and then about a few, just a few t short time ago, he pa he he did some executive orders to say now we're going to close it. Now both can't be right, can they? How many times? And two. It's not all Hispanic people coming up from South and Central America. They're coming from all over the world. I wonder why if America is such a terrible place that we've got people wanting to rush in here from all over the world. Hmm. Well, I don't think that's all of it. I think it's a thing called freedom. But anyway, some of them are. Some of them live in countries where it'd be, I, I wouldn't want to live in Cuba. But you know, we're about to face off again Russian submarines down around Cuba. Well, remember, I remember that. Anybody remember JFK? John Fitzgerald Kennedy? And Russia was putting missiles in down there. And what happened? But I think we're so weak right now, I don't know what they'll do about it, Kennedy, if anything. But anyway, those are some things that are taboo. I shouldn't be talking about them. Right. And especially not in church. Because okay. you're not supposed to talk about two things. Politics. I've been told all my life, don't talk about religion or politics. Now, if you did, if I couldn't talk about religion, I asked a lady up the street here, I was knocking doors, and she told me, I asked her if she, she was a Christian, she says, that's none of your business. <laughs> and I felt like it was my business. Because my business is to try to get people to become Christians. What's your business? What's your business? Do you want to get people to become Christians or not? Well, you know, why, why, why did America push literacy so much? So you can read a Bible. Right. Now they say, well, we don't want to read the Bible over to school. <laughs> we don't want to pray over to school. Now let me move on to something more important. Something more important. <laughs> No, really, the purpose of the message, I'm, I'm trying to build dads up. Dads are supposed to be the leaders in the home, aren't they? They are. Now somebody says, now you had a text and you never have even read it, so I'm going to read it about now. Okay. Now we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 6 and read about four verses. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. But yet I see commercials on TV and the kids are telling the parents what to do yeah. don't they yeah. and they talk down to mom and dad yeah. Yeah. I don't know mom and dad the guy's six foot over uh, 150 pounds and he's got a little kid that weighs he might be two or three foot at the most and what's he weigh now who should be the boss But that's not the matter. The matter is, God put the dad over the family. Amen. There's three institutions in the Bible. The first one ever started was a family. Before the fall. Amen. Then the next one was government. Then the next one was the church. Amen. And they were all put there to protect us. But sometimes people take those things that God took and they abuse them and mess them up. Children don't belong to the government. But yet on the other hand, any parent that's abusing children ought to get put in jail. But I don't know. You've got to be careful how you judge all that. Don't you? Because God did give you your kids. And they're yours. But they ought to be the most valuable, one of the most valuable things you have. Shouldn't they? Aren't they the most valuable things you have with kids? 
Most parents would do about anything they could for their kids. My mom and dad were that way. They would go without so I'd have nice clothes. Absolutely. And I could never pay them back. I ought to thank God I had parents like I had. Do you thank God for your parents? Some of you say, well, they've already passed on. So have mine, but I plan on seeing them again. That's my hope. So I read one verse, right? Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth, and ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Now there's a whole lot in there. Children, obey your parents. When you were coming up through school, did they ever tell you, be quiet, do what you're told, follow instructions? You ever hear that? Over and over and over and over. You know what? You heard it so many times, you said, I got tired of hearing it, but I think it had some effect on you. Because you knew there was somebody going to enforce it. You ever have to go stand out in the hall? Uh huh. Now, I shouldn't ask this one. Anybody ever get paddled? Anybody have to write something on the blackboard so many times? I mean, I'll eventually hit it. <laughs> if, if I fish around long enough, I'll, I'll hit something here. But you know, in these verses, you want to live long? Honor your mom and dad. It's a promise. Somebody says, well, what's that got to do with it? Well, I don't know if mom and dad tell you to be, uh, look both ways before you cross the street. And you do that, you're probably less likely to get run over by a car. Uh huh? If they tell you not to hang around with certain people, think that might save you from a lot of trouble? If they try to keep you from seeing and hearing things you shouldn't see and hear, and we got a big problem with that with the internet and telephones. And telephones. In the past, we didn't have as much of that. I think family ought to have meals together and put the telephones down, sit and look at each other and talk. Wouldn't probably hurt to pray together. Would it? Could even read the Bible together. Amen. Read the Bible to each other. Well, that may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Should we nurture them and admonish them? Admonish them would be teach them how to do and what not to do. And, and uh, nurture, I think uh, that's meeting their physical needs and emotional needs. And we could, uh, out of those two words, you could get a whole bunch of uh, things that parents ought to do for their children. Uh, first thing I wanted to talk about is teaching your children. And uh, there's a difference in teaching them and training them. Amen. So I said, well, what's the difference? Well, I'm planning on telling you. Planning on telling you. What's the difference in teaching and training? First of all, I said you ought to honor. Where's the first marriage found in the Bible? I heard this preacher, he's going to do his first wedding, you know. And he said, well, I'm going to try to find in the Bible how to do a marriage. So he's looking through the Bible trying to find a marriage ceremony. Now, where would you go if you're going to look for a marriage ceremony in the Bible? I'd go to Genesis. That's the beginning book. No, I, I, I think you're missing it here. But I'll show you something. Go to Genesis chapter 2. That's right away. And I'm going to show you the first marriage. 
Who got married? Adam and Eve. That's right. Now, who married them? God. <laughs> when you get married, it's not just the couple and the preacher there. God ought to be there. Isn't that the way it ought to work? So we're looking at Genesis chapter 2. Go down to two verses. Let's go down here in Genesis chapter uh, 2, verse 24 and 25. 2.24. My Bible, the notes say, first marriage. Verse 24. Therefore shall man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were... Uh, were both naked and the man and his wife and were not ashamed. Now, I didn't know Adam and Eve had a mother and a father. Oh, they had a mother. Or they had a father, God. But this is a special marriage here. Did they have much choice who they married? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I'm sure Eve said you're the most handsome man I've ever seen and Eve said you're the uh, Adam said you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen Amen. <laughs> and, that, and that just as true as it could be but there's more to beauty and handsomeness than outward looks the inward is more important really than the outward but we look at the outward, and I don't blame you. Of course, one of the main reasons I married Carol, she smiled. I don't want to marry to somebody who's running around with a sad look on their face all the time. Then I guess I could throw another one in. She could cook pretty good. But you didn't know that, did you? Yeah, well, her mother, well, she, yeah, I knew some of that. I'm sure I did. You know what the first meal she ever made for me was? Cornbread. Goulash. In a, and she made it in a coffee pot, you know, a glass one. Yeah. We'd just gotten married, went to Springfield, Missouri. And got a, rented a little three-room apartment. And uh, that's the first thing I remember her cooking for me. Wonder one spaghetti, right? But it was goulash. Is that Hungarian? I had some of this last week she made for me. But anyway, uh, to teach children, now let's go to Deuteronomy. There's a difference in teaching and training. And so Deuteronomy, let's go to Deuteronomy. And I think here you're into the teaching part. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 through 9. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6. And these words which I command thee, this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and then when thou risest up. You think we ought to be talking to our kids about what God says in the Bible all the time? Amen. Well, what we say is teaching. You say it. Did your teachers act everything out? Or did they just stand there and tell you stuff? But, you know, they can't make you learn. That's right. But if they put enough in front of you, you're probably going to pick up faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So you just keep putting it out, putting it out, and start when they're real little. Don't wait till they're a teenager. That's too late. Well, the Roman Catholic Church says, you let me have your kids from the time they're born till they're 12, and you'll never change them. That's what they think. Yeah. I've read that somewhere. It wasn't in the Bible. I read a lot of things not in the Bible. Anyway, now we're down here to verse 8. 
and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontals be between thine eyes. Now somebody says, what's that talking about? Well, these Jewish people got some weird stuff. It's like a metal thing that, or a leather thing they put on their forehead and they put verses in it. And then they got one they wrap around their hand with verses in it. You've probably seen some Jewish people with something like that. And that's what it's talking about here. In the frontals, in front of your head. But, I think maybe we ought to teach them something about how how they should think and what they should do. Amen. Your head's thinking, isn't it? But you're not going to do much unless you think it out. But on the other hand, you could just sit and think and never do it. All right, use your hand. And do both of them. But we need to teach them. We, we could teach them verbally things, but we also... Now, training gets more into actual physically doing it, where they see you do it. Amen. And uh, they sometimes call that on-the-job training. And then we ought to have lifelong learning. Just keep reading your Bible. Brother Mapp's been still learning about the Bible. Been through it quite a few times. But every time you can learn some more. You'll notice something you never noticed before. Sometimes it almost jump off the page at you. Amen. You, you, it's a living Word of God. Now I told you six through nine. What are we down to here? Seven or eight? Nine. Nine. Man. Oh, I'm doing better than I thought. Time-wise, I'm not. So I better speed up. I got thumb indexes, but these pages stick together. Verse 9 says, And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. Anybody got any verses around their house? My dad had one in our his uh, family room. It says, As for me and my house will serve the Lord. Amen. Or some people might have the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. or somebody might have the 23rd chapter of Psalms maybe you might have the Lord's Prayer Amen. Uh, when we were Martin was younger tried to develop his vocabulary of course he couldn't hear we'd put a thing on the refrigerator refrigerator stove <laughs> so he'd see it you know you learn by hearing and seeing. Amen. Now, when I first took psychology, general psych, they said, well, you learn through your senses. You see it, touch it, smell it, taste it. And that's how we learn the most. Well, maybe not. That's how we learn. But, I think you got a sixth sense if you're a Christian. Amen. Don't you? Think God ever teaches you anything? Does the Holy Spirit teach you? He's a, he's a great teacher. <clears throat> Jesus was a great teacher and He taught through the disciples for three years and went back to heaven. And then He said, I'm going to send you a, another comforter and He's going to bring th all things that you're remembered that I've taught you. And so, teaching is verbally saying it. Plus, then they, I guess they could read it. You know, there's some people who can't read. I worked with a guy, Coke, and he'd come up and he'd say, uh, what do you punch for cream on the coffee machine? And he really couldn't tell time unless he had a watch that popped up, you know, 2.30. Couldn't tell with the hands. They tried to take him off of driving a forklift said, well, he wouldn't know what the product was, but he could tell by the colors of the cases and the, so they didn't get that done. And I'm not making that up. His dad worked there as a boss and he had a brother and they both forklift drivers. 
But not only should we teach, but to train them. And somebody says, well, what are we going to see this about training? Well, let's go to Proverbs. And we'll look at some verses in Proverbs. So it's Job, Psalms, Proverbs. That ought to be pretty easy to find. Proverbs has a, it's a wisdom book, isn't it? Now, it's kind of a hard book. Not real easy to get the outline of it. It's just a little short things that they say, and we need to pick some of these up. So let's go to Proverbs 22. Proverbs chapter 22. Then we're going to go down here to 6 and 28. Proverbs 22, verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, is old, he will not depart from it. Now, if you just tell him, I think you'll probably depart from it. But if you tell him and do it yourself, and he sees you do it, then I think it's a whole lot more less likely he's going to ever depart from it. Just like the Bible says. But if you tell them, uh, actions speak louder than words. But you need to have the words and the actions. You need to teach them and train them. You might have to teach them to eat with a knife and fork. Well, they don't know. How do they usually eat when they start out? They just pick it up. Right? You wouldn't want to see them get embarrassed. So we read verse uh, 6. Now I'm going to go down to verse 28. A false witness shall perish. Am I in the right chapter? No, nope, I'm in the wrong chapter. I'm a chapter off. Yes. Move one more page over. Verse 28, Remove not the ancient landmarks which thy fathers have set. Are they trying to remove the ancient long landmarks in America? They've tried to make them take down crosses. They've made them take down nativity scenes. Haven't they? They take down a, a, a fellow named Robert E. Lee's statues. Was Robert E. Lee a Christian? is an outstanding Christian. Another guy, Stonewall Jackson, he was an outstanding Christian. So let's just tear down their statues. Abraham Lincoln. Now, it's debatable whether he was a Christian, but he, I'll tell you this, he knew a lot about the Bible. Now, how did he learn the Bible? His mother taught him when he was young, growing up. But then, also, he probably saw her pray. He probably... So, he was taught and trained. You think he was a very good president? Yeah. I think if he hadn't got assassinated, after the Civil War, it would have been a whole lot different. I don't think that they'd had all the carpet baggers and a lot of the stuff that went on after the Civil War. I think the country would have come together more because Lincoln really got along even with his enemies. Wonder where he got an idea like that. Love your enemies. You treat them the way you want to be treated. Well, so we've talked about teaching and training. And like I say, actions speak louder than words. And a fellow comes home from work and he's worked real hard all day and his back's hurting and his little boy says, well, come throw a ball around with me. And he doesn't really feel like it. 
I mean, he's tired. He just got home from work. His back's hurting. But he does. He goes out in the yard and he throws the ball back and forth with his son. And somebody says, well, why would you do that? And he said, well, I would, I'd rather have a tired back now rather than a broken heart later. Yeah. And I think that's a lot of what... You know what contributes to poverty more than anything? A one-parent family where dad's gone and mom's trying to support him by herself. But that anymore, it's come times the other way. Mother's gone and dad's trying to take care of him by himself. I think a lot of societies flip-flopped. And so those are some of the things that I wanted to give you. And then one, one last place. Book of Joshua, the 24th chapter. Joshua chapter 24. We've only got a few verses there. Then I'll be done. Joshua 24, verses 14 and 15. Joshua 24, verse 14. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. Did God bring them out of bondage down in Egypt? Did Egypt have all kinds of gods? Yes. When they, they started going into other countries, why did God tell them not to intermarry with other people? wasn't a race thing. It was a religious thing. Because if you're married to somebody that doesn't believe like you do, then it's hard for you to be a good Christian. It's best to marry somebody that believes like you do. Then you can go to church together. Then you can pray together. Then you'll have a lot of the same attitudes because you're going to base it on the Word of God. And so in verse 14, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity. Don't put on a show. You know, some people, they, they, they live for God so somebody pat them on the back. Oh, you're such a good Christian. But if their heart's not right, it doesn't amount to anything. And God looks at the heart. But some people get caught up in the looks of how the front people put on. I had a fellow tell me some years ago that come to our church says, Christians aren't hypocrites. I think some Christians are hypocrites. They say they're saved, but they act like the devil. Then they come to church they act like God. What do you call that? Is that two-faced? Yeah. Off and on. But we all have an old and a new nature, but I'm not going to go into all that this morning. There's a battle. Now, therefore, fear the Lord. Serve Him with sincerity and in truth. How are you going to know what the truth is? Man, if I watch TV, church flips every few minutes. I get on the Internet. Get you a Bible. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. No man can come to the Father but by me. You really want to know the truth about how the world's going to end up? Don't listen to this global warning, warning, warming nuts. Amen. Tree huggers. Now I'm not telling you to go out and litter up the place That's right. and destroy everything because you have to live here. But this world will last as long as God wants it to last and there's Scripture verses that say the seasons will continue. Warm, cold, warm, cold. Now I know we're about to go into a real hot spell. And one of these days, but you know, sometimes we have a real bad winter, sometimes not as bad. But anyway, God is in control. Yes or no? See, I'm going to have to get me one of those noble signs. Hold up, says Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's probably under the pulpit here. But he brought them out of uh, 
our bondage down in uh, Egypt. Egypt's a picture type of the world. Satan's a picture of the devil. And uh, so then he says, serve the Lord. In verse 15, and it is, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve. Now, that should have happened when you got saved. But I think some Christians get saved, but then after that, they slide backwards. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't believe they lose their salvation, but they get away from God. The and the most dangerous place a Christian can be is out of the will of God. That's right. It's dangerous to fool around with God. Because He will judge you. you say, well, I'm saved. I'm not going to hell. A lot of times people pay a price for their actions in this life. <coughs> don't they? They do things they shouldn't be doing and it comes back to haunt them. Alcoholism, drugs, mm -hmm. pornography. I could probably go on to gambling. I'll throw that one in. <coughs> Is it alright if I throw that one in? Covetousness. If I think long enough, I come up with some more. I'm going to not do that. Though. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, he's talking about the Amorites, and he's talking about the gods back before. Down in Egypt, they had gods. The Amorites had other gods. But there's only one true God. And somebody says, well, who's that? Well, I think that Jesus is God. And I can show you a lot of verses that say that. But a lot of people attack Jesus. Without Jesus, there's no way for you to get saved. Of course, the Father had to send the Son, the Son had to come, and the Holy Spirit had to work that out in your heart. So it takes all three of them. Let's all stand.